Campbell Hatton, Roy Jones Jr. What a pair. Thank you very much for joining us. We're in the bubble. I want to start with you, Campbell, and move over to Roy. Welcome to the fight camp, well, uh, fight bubble, should I say. How are you feeling? Yeah, ready to go now, just on the way in. So it's the last bit, last bit out the way. All I've got to do is fight. How was the way in? You, you, you've done one already. It was huge, you know, the lot of pressure, everything else. You've said a few times this one's a bit smaller, a bit calmer. How was it being up at the up at the, up at the way in? Yeah, um, like there's still little little bits of nerves. Uh, like I think it will be like that way for my whole career, uh, but it weren't anything close to what I felt like on my debut. Like I've been able to just chill out and, and relax and I've not had much to do. I've been, like I've said a few times, I've been grateful to be bored this time. <laughs> what do you know about your opponent? You, you mentioned on the stage that you've sparred him before, so he's not a completely new guy to you, but what do you know about him? Yeah, he's, um, it's, like, it's like what you're getting in, in like a journey with him really. Like he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't go, like for you to just walk over him, he, do, he comes and has a go, comes to fight and I do think he'll give me a few tests and like I'm expecting him to anyways. And when I sparred him, it was quite a good move, I didn't like what to engage in a fight too much, so I've been able to get a bit of a game plan together. What do you know about the guy sitting next to you, Roy Jones Jr, what do you know about him? Absolute legend of the game, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be sat here with him. Right, let, let me take you back to when you were at the stage that Campbell's at now, when you had it all in front of you, you didn't know which way it was going to go. Right. What do you remember from those times? I just remember always being nervous because you never know what's going to happen. But like you said, you'll be nervous throughout your whole career. It's not about being nervous, it's about remembering that every day you can't relive. So you don't let nervous or anything else stop you from doing what you want to do because you don't want to have to go back and redo anything. What advice, let me put you on the spot, with Campbell sitting here about to go into second fight, and we've got to say, the second fight consecutively on a massive card. You know, this is not a small hall show. It's a big card. What advice would you give to him? Just take it all in. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. You only live once. Enjoy it. Uh, cherish the moment. Because these moments will never come back. So cherish these moments. These are really good moments for you. You've been blessed. You've been, I mean, blessed to be put in a very beautiful spot. Enjoy it. Just make sure you cherish these moments. What do you both think, again, I'll start with you, Campbell, and move over to her. What do you think about the card as a whole? It's a huge card, loads of big fights. What, what, what are you thinking about it? Yeah, every fight's a good one, isn't it? There's um, like some top names on there, like, like Chris, Marcus. Um, like the main event's an absolute cracker. Katie Taylor, Natasha Jones, like the list's endless. I don't think there's a, a, a dull fight on here. So I'm buzzing to, like, to be able to put my name amongst like, some, of the, some of the others on the card. You mentioned Chris Eubank, obviously Roy's training Chris, we'll come to you in a second about that Roy. What do you think of his return and, and his link up with Roy? I think it's a really good move for him to be honest. He's, uh, he's shown through his career so far that he's got like, every asset that you need really, he's ticked every box but the only thing that he's not really done as much is show that like, he's worked with a trainer consistently and obviously there's a bit like a bit of Technically, there was some errors he was making, like a bit more of a jab he could have done with, and like the distance. But like for the boxing side, I don't think there's a better man he could go to. So, there's um, like I think it is a really good move for him. Thank you, Roy, ask a silly question: Is Chris ready for this fight? Yeah, I think Chris is ready for the fight. Um, for me, you know, it's like you can't change the wheel, and you don't want to come in and try to overdo a job. You feel me? So it's like. Chris had a lot of good things going for him already. Uh, honestly, in my opinion, like I told him, I think when I met him, he still should have, was good enough to probably pull off victory against this guy because this guy hasn't been to that top stage yet. Like Chris had some his experience and put him through if nothing else. Um, the only good thing is that I'm, I'm thinking that I know that Chris likes to learn. And when he's learning, he's usually willing to show. So I love that about him. He's challenging him to show, what you, show you what he's learned. So I know when he goes out there, he's going to box and be the old Chris too. But I do expect him to quickly start showing some of the things he's learned. You were talking to us before on the way down. You know, Marcus is a hometown fighter. You know, there's there's a lot of people who know him around there. Campbell, you're from the same area. Have you come across Marcus before? Yeah, loads of times. Like, I've known Marcus for years. It's like, I know we're both Manchester, but we're even more local than that. Like from the like exact same area. So. 
Like Roy won't be uh, glad to hear, but I, I will be rooting for Marcus. But like you say, it is, it's a big ask for him, and he, like he's never, he hasn't been at this level before. So like the, Chris is, is going to be the favourite going into the fight, but uh, Roy and Chris will probably say themselves, you, you can never write someone off in this game. Yeah. yeah. No. Do you agree with that, Roy? I agree with that 100. percent And uh, it's like you know, the thing about boxing is this is what makes it such a beautiful sport. Everybody has somebody that loves them. Everybody has people that they grew up with, they were friends with, and you know you have to show your patriotism. And he grew up with Marcus, and he grew Marcus in the area. Of course, he has root for Marcus because that's his boy. So you expect it, and uh, you also respect it. That's what I love about boxing. My problem with life in general is that that one thing we just said right there. People can't tend to learn to respect other people's choices and decisions. You understand me? Yeah. yeah. We respect the fact that we know both guys. We like both guys. But He's close to his guy and I'm close to my guy and it has nothing to do with our friendship. We still just the same because when he said the respect he gave me, the respect I give him and his father, you have to just understand and know that's what that is. So yeah, there are gonna be times when you're on the left and I'm on the right. But that doesn't mean that we hate each other, it's just that that's that's the gap, you know. We put up our gap. Yeah, of course. Well listen guys, big fight what, thirty hours away now, thirty five hours, something like that. Not long to go. We'll see you both tomorrow night. All the best. Yes, sir. Thank you, mate.